Hello and welcome. My name is John Rush. I'm a systems engineer with Shavlik. Today I'm going to be talking about Shavlik Protect, specifically about the patch management of your virtual environment. You know, what is this what does this really mean? Inside of your environment, you have both physical and virtual machines that need to be managed, especially when it comes to patch management. Uh, physical machines are online. Uh, they can be accessed directly. Uh, they can be patched using the Windows Update service or other tools. Uh, but when, it's, when you start talking about managing your virtual environment, things really change. Uh, because you have a number of offline virtual machine capabilities, you have a number of templates, and of course the ESX host itself or the, the hypervisor uh, needs to be patched. Our history as a, a VMware company at one point, uh, we have a, a very strong integration into the vCenter environment, whether it's a vCenter server itself or just the SXI host one by one. And, and, and so for us to have the ability to manage and patch those machines, uh, I think is a very important part of our, of our story. When you start talking about offline virtual machines and, and virtual machine templates, these are, these are files that's set on top of an ESX host in the file system. They are not running. They don't have a network name. They don't have uh, an IP address. They can't be addressed in the normal functionality of a, a Windows Update service or some other tool trying to do the patch management. Uh, there needs to be a different way to be able to scan and patch those machines. So offline virtual machines, offline templates. And then also as part of this overall process, do you wish to, do you want to um, take a snapshot uh, of a virtual machine before you patch it. Now this has huge ramifications on disk space, it has ramifications on uh, performance, it has ramifications on, on uh, processing power, um, length of time, those kinds of things. But again, it, it's important to have that type of functionality available to you should you need it or should you want to use it, again, for the purposes of patching. And then of course the SX host patching is, is relatively new to our product. It, it only came out in version 9. But again, the idea is that it, it allows you to keep that host patched because it is, in fact, an application running on top of an operating system. Uh, though it's very tightly controlled by VMware, there are still uh, vulnerabilities that get exposed that need to be fixed. So we're going to take a look at these things in, in, in more specific uh, ways. All right, so here we are at the Protect homepage. I'm using the advanced version, but the functionality I'm about to show you is both available in the advanced and the standard version. Uh, there's no difference between those two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new machine group that I want to be able to manage. So I'm going to go up here and say New Machine Group. And I want to do um, Patch, Patching of a Template. That's what I'm going to call this one. I'm then presented with the, the dialog box that allows me to, to manage my machine groups. Here I would normally uh, add a machine by name, uh, click to my domain, add by IP address or organization unit. But in this case, I'm going to use a hosted virtual machine tab. Now I have already pre-set up or added my vCenter server. It's a pretty simple forward uh, process. You just tell us the name of the server, the port number that it's listening on, and what credential that you want to log on to that machine. And I've got one I call my vCenter root. Uh, depends on your credentials. Will depend on what you can see and do inside of vCenter. So it, it depends on what you want to set up for this. So again, I've already set one up, and on that particular vCenter environment, I am managing two ESX hosts. And on one of those hosts, this number 230 machine, I have a number of virtual machines available to me that are online or offline, and I have uh, one template. I'm actually going to use this template for my example to, to show you the functionality. So I'm going to click on that one, right mouse click, and say let's add that to my machine group. When we add a template or an offline virtual machine to a machine group using this hosted virtual machine template, what it's really defining is I'm going to be able to talk to the vCenter server using the browse credentials that I created when I created the connection to that server that's going to allow me to see the VDX file on the host. And what we do is in the scanning process we actually scan that offline file as if it was an online virtual machine. We scan it for the same things we scanned before. We look for registry information. We look for file system information. And again, we can read that, in, that, that data that way. When it comes time to patching, we are actually going to fire up or run this virtual machine. So I have to define a secondary, con, uh, a secondary administrative credential um, that is basically the administration login for that particular machine. 
and I've already got one preset so I'm going to go ahead and grab that from my credential manager I call it my uh, admin test so now I know how to read the offline by hitting the virtual server browse credentials and when it's running I'm going to use the administrator test credential that I have so I've created this group I'm going to go ahead and run an operation against this and I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to patch uh, I'm going to use the name of this console my patch of template console I'm going to use the standard out of the box security patch scan template I am NOT going to auto deploy and let's get this started now again when we when we get into this process what's really happening is um, we are making a call to the vCenter environment through the API and we're saying we would like access to that system and we would like to read the information inside of that file so we're actually logging on to that machine to pull its information in uh, we're talking to the vCenter server again we're not talking directly to the file we're talking to vCenter through the API and then we begin the scan process again because we're going through the API and because of my demo environment here it's not extremely fast in, in this example that I'm giving you but again I just want you to understand the basic process in your environment I, I certainly hope it will go faster because you're, you're gonna have a much more powerful machine uh, to be able to pull that information in again what we're doing in this scan process is the same thing we do on our physical machines we are uh, ascertaining what operating system and what version of that operating system is running you know Windows 7 Windows 8 whatever it might be uh, any service that are applied, uh, any applications running on it, whether they're Microsoft applications or third-party applications. Because I'm using the security patch scan template, we're scanning for all products that, that protect supports, security patches only, all criticality. Pretty much the, the, the standard functionality that we do out of the box. Our results are coming back in now. That we've completed the scan. We're simply just waiting for the results to be written to the SQL Server database uh, so that can be displayed on the screen. I have successfully scanned the machine uh, preliminarily I can see that I'm missing 31 patches um, I have one end-of-life product uh, that I might want to have to take a look at but for now I'm just going to view the completed results again this takes us into a standard um, re results screen that talks about uh, the name of what I just did patching of a template that's the machine group that we did uh, here's when we did it I did it off this machine using the security patch scan template and I can see the results now note, note the icon that icon represents a template uh, if it was an offline virtual machine we would see the, the the small little VMware logo identified there and if it's a physical machine it has a different logo as well when I expand the number of patches missing again these are the standard players if you will it's Apple iTunes it's Adobe Flash it's whatever it might be so let's say that I want to go ahead and patch uh, this particular item I'm going to right mouse click and say I want to deploy the selected patch now we have a number of choices here in the deployment template uh, if you read this like a book from the top to bottom deploy, deploy to one machine one patch using a deployment template I want to install the patches uh, immediately and I want to control the reboot I'm going to create a, uh, a, a new template for us to use here I'm going to call this my template I'm going to call this deployment to a VM template make it very explicit and then I have some things that I can do one uh, this is a template so I don't necessarily need to put a dialog box I'm not going to do that uh, I do want to remove the temp files when I'm done that means that the one, once it's done I'm going to delete the binary file so that template does get, doesn't get any bigger I do want to uh, include the backup files uh, in just in case I need them later uh, I'm not going to do a pre-deployment reboot uh, I am going to do a post-deployment reboot if needed so I'll just say uh, reboot uh, when needed. I'm going to do always. We'll leave it that way. I do want to talk about specifically this tab called hosted VMs and templates. This is where I can identify whether or not I want to take a, a snapshot. Now again there's many ramifications about taking a snapshot. It's disk space, it's time to take the snapshot, it, it's all those types of things. But again the, the value here of course is that if something should go wrong I can revert back the template and, and move forward. I am not going to do any in this particular case but again I just want to identify these. So if I check this box I will take a, a pre-deployment snapshot. If I check this box I will take a post-deployment snapshot. Again I don't want to do those two if I do take a snapshot how many snapshots do I want to manage in other words how many do I want to keep if the number is two if I do a, a third deployment and it creates a snapshot then the first snapshot will go away automatically or I can say just keep the snapshots for a couple of days until I'm sure everything's okay and then automatically delete those snapshots for me 
Uh, so again, this this provides some functionality uh, to help you help help you maintain and uh, to help you maintain and keep everything uh, up to date and uh, remove the amount of disk space that's being used. Again, for for this case, I'm not going to do any templates, so I'm just going to say, hit save for now. So now I have this deployment to VM template that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to go ahead and deploy. Now, while this is deploying, I'm going to do a couple of things. I do have a vCenter up here and running, so I'm going to minimize that for just a minute. This is my vCenter environment, and this is the machine that I'm actually working on. And the very first thing that just happened is uh, we sent an API call to vCenter to say convert that thing back to a, a, a virtual machine, which we've done. And then the next thing it's going to do, it's going to go in and change some configuration settings on that. When we're managing a template or an offline virtual machine, uh, the most important thing that we do is we don't expose your environment to risk. So what we're doing in the background is we're telling the vCenter environment through the API to convert that back to a virtual machine and then we're going to go in to the configuration settings of that machine and we are going to turn off networking or I should say we're going to bring it up uh, we're going to configure it to be a, a non-network device uh, and in the case of a template we're also going to if, if it's turned on we're going to turn off sysprep because later on uh, we don't want sysprep to run when we, when we run this machine. Now again if I go back to protect and see the current status of what's going on uh, we've downloaded those I'm going to watch this information in, in what we call tracker Tracker is our real-time um, notification engine that allows us to see exactly what's going on at any moment in time. And right now it's initializing. So again, I'm going to minimize this for a minute. It's initializing the VM for us to work on it. So there's some things going on behind the scenes in which it's uh, uh, talking uh, to the virtual environment. Now, as you can see, uh, it, it just uh, the screen just went to reconfigure the, the virtual machine. That's where we go to touch those settings. And then we're powering on the virtual machine. Over here in our vCenter environment, we see that information showing up here in the recent task, and we can now see that that machine is, in fact, uh, uh, turned on. Now, as it powers up, it has to go through its entire power-up cycle, uh, so it takes a couple of moments for that to happen. Uh, once that happens, then we'll actually go through the deployment process where we'll put the files on the machine and go through that, that deployment. I'm going to click on here so we see information about what's going on. Uh, currently, the VMware tools are not running, but it is current. It is powered on. Uh, we're, we're, you know, that's the machine that I'm talking on. Now, as we can see, our screen has updated. Uh, the, the, the tracker has updated to say that we are currently executing uh, the deployment of that patch. Again, what's interesting here is if you have a number of templates being managed at any one time, we can see exactly which patch is being applied at any moment in time. By viewing, it, by viewing it in the real-time tracker. What will happen now is at some point in time it will finish executing the tracker and it will then execute the reboot command uh, as we defined earlier in our template. As you can now see we've updated again. We have completed executing that. We are now pending a reboot. So because we identified that we wanted to have a reboot happen, uh, the virtual machine is being rebooted uh, even as we speak. Command is going out to the vCenter environment. Again, it, it takes a, sec a couple seconds to go through that environment, uh, but again, it's going to now reboot that, that virtual machine. I'm going to direct your attention down here to the recent task, and what we're waiting for right now is the, the command that says uh, power off and then power up again. We can watch this in real time. I'm going to go ahead and open the console here for that particular machine. Give it a second to load up. Uh, because what I'm expecting to see now is I'm expecting to see the dialog box that says uh, the machine is about to reboot and because I use the default functionality it, it, there's a, a, a time delay it, it's going to try to wait for about five minutes um, that's the default functionality I want to speed that up a little bit so I'm going to go out here and wait for this to come up and I'm going to go ahead and there should like I said there should be a dialog box on the screen that I should be able to click on uh, to speed this process up you wouldn't normally have to do this. Um, I'm, again, I'm only doing this for the, the purposes of this demonstration. As you can see now, the machine is shutting down. And over here in our uh, recent task, we can see that we initiated a guest shutdown. Uh, that was based on the uh, template that we used. If we look at our tracker status, we see that it's being powered off. So there's a lot of information being presented to you, whether you're on the, the vCenter side of the house or whether you're in the protect side of the house. 
we allow you to see what's going on in real time. You see the configuration. Also, you notice that we've marked the machine back as a template again. We are now pending a rescan. So again, here's what we did. We logged on the machine to scan it in an offline mode. We then determined it was missing patches. We initiated the deployment process, which went in and converted it back to a, a VM, changed the configuration settings, brought it up, installed the patch, brought it back down, changed the configuration settings again, and now we converted it back to a template. Now that it's back to the template, we're doing again an offline scan to ensure that the patches were installed correctly. Basically, we're just doing a rescan of what we did before to determine whether or not there's any uh, uh, trouble with the process. And if all things are correct at the end of this scanning process, it'll come back and say patch successfully installed. And as you can see, it now says successfully installed. So we have completed the entire patch cycle uh, for this particular template. We have installed the Adobe Flash uh, plugin update. Uh, with that, I'm going to close this particular segment. Appreciate your time and hope you have a much better understanding of how our offline template and virtual machine patching works. Thanks.